Hey, what's up, everybody? I am August C. Jones, and I am back. I know it's been a minute, but I am back doing movie reviews, podcasts, and all that stuff. So if you guys bear with me, I have multiple things to release this week uh, just to kind of make up for my long hiatus. And um, just to not talk too much into anything, let's go ahead and just get into these movie reviews that I have planned for today, which is reviews for Old and reviews for Snake Eye. And so with that out the way, let's go ahead and jump right into the first review, which is for the movie Old, the new M. Night Shyamalan movie. And so... I went into this movie not really knowing what to expect. This is one of those movies that come off as just more of a mystery that the gimmick or the pull for this movie to get you in the seats is like, what the hell is going on? You know it's a review and you just want to see it. So what's what what's really is what's really going on? So watching this movie made me realize something that I am not a huge fan of M. Night Shyamalan style of directing. I'm just not. Uh, and it's like, I do like a lot of his movies or, you know, s- several of his films or whatnot. I do like, um, what's it, The Sixth Sense. I do like Split. Unbreakable was kind of good. I I, I, I can say I like that. And what was the last one? Um, Glass. Glass is not, I don't know, like, that that movie, that's a whole nother review, but that movie wasn't that great, but it's certain movies that I do like, Signs, I do remember, you know, really liking that, and even to today, I still like it, but I just don't really like his style of directing, but I'm not about to bash this movie, that's not what this is all about, but I do have a lot to say about this movie, I can say really what I do like about the film is that it does have itself wrapped around a good mystery and I like when stories have the main characters or just whatever the characters in a predicament that they don't put themselves in something that's just unexpected something that they find themselves into they stumble upon somebody else puts them into uh, unbeknownst to them or whatever and I, I like those type of settings because it's nothing stupid that they've done to put themselves in this and now they have to try and figure out a way to get out of this scenario and so watching this that was a good premise to go off of and it does you know has some good acting uh, here and there at certain parts uh, and really Uh, there's no real good way to talk about this movie through my eyes to you know basically make it as a good film because to me it's not i went into this i wanted to like it but it was just a lot of things that was just like hitting me and just took me out of the film like unrealistic reactions i hate that in movies it don't matter if it's a horror drama whatever Unless your characters have a purpose on reacting a certain way, why are they reacting a certain type of, why are they reacting like nonchalantly or whatever? And M. Night has this with a lot of his films. Like, I don't know if it's just me that's noticing it, which I highly doubt, but a lot of his characters kind of like, they have a reaction like they lost their soul. And I don't know, more than likely... It's not even just on the actors. It's the way that they're being directed. Now, I'm not saying that M. Night is a bad director. But for some reason, he has his characters act in a manner to where it's kind of unrealistic. And it just dawned on me that M. Night must be kind of connecting all of these movies together to make his own little... Not I'm not saying like this is like a whole cinematic thing or whatever that he's doing... But it seemed kind of like a Twilight Zone kind of feel. The reason why the characters are acting a certain type of way. But I, I don't know. Like, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's always put me off about his films. Like, you can look about it. You can look at these, this type of acting in signs. Especially with the happening. Uh, what is it? Lady in the Water. Uh, what is it? The Village? I believe. I ain't seen Village in a while, but I'm pretty sure that there is acting like that up in there. Even with, like, Split with Anya Teller Joy. Her character acts that way. I mean, she, if you've seen the movie, she kind of has maybe, I guess you could say, a reason to act that way. 
But overall, their characters, even Bruce Willis's character in Unbreakable in Glass, acts this way. And it's just like, I just can't wrap my head around it. Why these characters are acting that way? And that's what you get within this film. It's like these characters are acting so fucking weird. Like, it's just, I don't understand it. And it's just, I, I don't I don't know. Like, M. Night has his own way of how he wants to direct his actors. But it just really throws me off at the way he directs it. And it just, it comes off just... Kind of, it just takes me out the out the film when I see this type of acting. I really, I don't know. It feels like they wanted to act more, give more of a, a dramatic feel to like their reactions, but they couldn't because M Night wants them to act this type of way. And it's also within the way that it's written. Certain lines of dialogue, it's like that's not how real people talk. <laughs> you know, it's just so weird. And it's like it's not just like one character does this. It's several characters. So there's no reason for all these different characters from different walks of life that don't know each other before this instance to act like this. And not only that, there is a thing in this movie where it's all about occupations. I don't know why. Little kid in the main family, little boy, he does this thing. Now, kids are going to do this, so I'll give it a pass. He goes up to people and asks them what's their name, their occupation. Once he learns that, he'll be like, okay, bye, and moves on to the next person. So I understand that. Kids do weird, crazy stuff like that. My son has done stuff of that nature. But every character in the movie mentions what they do several times throughout the film. And it's like, okay, does this really come into play? Some of them do, some of them do but not every one of them do like it's just like what's the point why do we need to know that you're a nurse why do we need to know that you're a doctor why do we need to know that you're a person that dig up like fossils why do we need to know these things like it just doesn't make sense and it's weird the dialogue is just off <laughs> but moving on and it's very ironic that this movie has to do with time and one of the things that is a negative about this movie to me is that it feels rushed from the beginning of the movie all the way to when we get to the island, even as things going, uh, uh, you know, coming along, progressing or whatever. It just seemed like everything is rushed. And I don't know if that was just kind of a, you know, something was done purposely or it was just, you know, you know, just done accidentally or whatever, but it just came across rushed. And I'm just like, oh my God, what the fuck? <laughs> like, it just don't, you don't really get to spend too much time with like uh, certain aspects. And this movie is not as bad as The Happening, but it's very reminiscent of The, um, of the Happening. From the acting to just the weird conversations and like I've like I've explained the acting and the dialogue and how, you know just all that stuff it's very reminiscent of that and this is <laughs> I don't know okay so it's one part and this may be a spoiler but it's not really uh there's a part where a medical procedure is being done and I'm just thinking, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure that that's, that's not how this procedure will more than likely be done. You know, it, it was just, I don't know, like it just, <laughs> it just came off weird. Um, but um, the humor actually worked for me. That the humor was actually surprisingly good. It was certain times where certain lines of dialogue were delivered or whatever, and it came across funny. I'm like, what the hell? Like, there is a one joke where they start to figure out that time is, you know, passing by quick and everything else, and they're trying to figure out, you know, what's what's going on. And one of the black characters look at the other black person and says that, like, uh, I bet they wish they were black. <laughs> or I bet this is one of those times they wish they were black. And I just started laughing. I'm like, that is fucking, that, that's good. That was that was a good, that was a good joke. And I did like that. Um, but one thing that just threw me off was that it seemed like everybody kind of aged differently. You know, it wasn't anything of where like everybody aged at the same time it was like that, that's what was kind of weird for me i don't know because it, it really didn't explain why people age at a certain time because it seemed like the kids 
were going through aging like super duper quick and the adults were going through it going through it slow some of them went through it real quick some of them you know it's just like why why would it you know and i'm just like okay cool whatever <clears throat> it is what it is but it just didn't seem like everything everybody aged together organically uh and there were some stupid decisions that were made by uh, a, a particular character at a particular time in the movie and you know i like I, I speak on it when i talk about movies i hate when characters do stupid things that normally in real life they probably would do the total opposite or you know just whatever and it was just like oh my god so it, it had times like that but uh overall this movie is a movie that i don't regret seeing it's just this was ever since i want to say the visit this and glass was the uh, movies that i really kind of felt that he didn't do his best at you know glass wasn't as bad as i say as this movie but it was kind of like yeah he, he could have did better with this and i don't know like would i recommend it i definitely would not recommend this movie if you're gonna watch it i would say either see it during the matinee or just wait till it comes out on streaming and rent it or you go know, check it out at Redbox. But this was not a great film. This is one of the lesser films from M. Night Shyamalan. I wouldn't say that it's as bad as The Happening or as bad as Lady in the Water. But it's, it's like floating down there somewhere with the Lady in the Water and the, uh, and the Happening. And I just, I, I really didn't enjoy this film. I didn't hate it, but I didn't enjoy it. You know, so if you have plans i want to go see that i'll just wait off and just you know check out something else um and speaking of that something else i don't think that movie should be snake eyes <laughs> if you're going to go see a movie i don't think it should be snake eyes because ah uh, speaking of that movie um snake eyes wasn't as great as i thought it was going to be now i've always said this and i've said this in different like uh, movie reviews that when it comes to like certain movies, you can always get the tone and what you're in for within the first scene of the film. And I'm talking about like how movies start off with like a scene that it happened that leads into the, you know, the, the title uh, sequence and then bam, the movie starts. When it has a scene like that, you can always tell where the movie is going to go. And with this movie... At the beginning, you can tell where it was going because one of the, okay, let me, let me just, <laughs> let me just go and start off with the good stuff. Cause I don't want to sound like I'm just sitting here bashing movies cause I don't want to come out. I don't want it to come out that way. So the things that I do like about this movie is that they do have good setups because if you are aware of G.I. Joe and everything else, I'm not too enthralled into like the the comics and you know how it was back then and everything else when it was like a cartoon and all that stuff, like the stories between the characters and everything else. Because I, I grew up watching G.I. Joe when I was a kid, but I never paid attention or really liked it that much to really follow it and plus i was like young i remember watching it in preschool that's how young i was you know they put it on for us in the morning time and everything else but it was like there is what i have known is that there is a rivalry between snake eyes and storm shadow and the way that they built that up within this movie from the beginning all the way to the end i do like that setup i really do like that setup um, I do like the acting up in there. The guy who plays Storm Shadow, he does a really amazing job. Henry Golden as Snake Eyes. He is a he's a great actor. I really do. I love him in Last Christmas. That's one of my favorite movies, one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time. And I thought that he did great as Snake Eyes in this film. And he, you know, uh did a real good job. And I as far as the rest of the film, I, I thought that it was good at some parts. Now, when it comes down to what I don't like about this film, there is a lot. First of all, 
what I was talking about at the beginning, the fight scenes. The fight scenes. Oh my God, the fight scenes are so jarring. This is one of those movies where when you go to see it, you think like, okay, this movie is about martial arts. It has ninjas. Gonna have some great action scenes. It's gonna have some great fighting scenes. Like, I can't wait. And then you go see it and you can't see shit. Like, literally, you go into this movie expecting all this martial arts and you don't get none of that. Like, every, it's just, it just seemed like either the actors couldn't perform the choreography for the fight scenes right, so they had to cut it together to make it look somewhat, you know, cohesive, or they didn't know how to shoot a fight scene. So they did what they did and then cut it together to make it kind of cohesive. And it just, it didn't work out because there was so many close-ups, so much shaky cam, choppy editing, and I'm like, what the hell am I watching? It got to the point where by the second fight, I almost wanted to leave. But I was there with my son. So I'm like, I got to stay here. And hopefully the movie would get better. And it kind of didn't. Because the choppy editing and everything else was in every fight. Even in the action scene where they're on the road with the motorcycles and the, and the cars and the swords and stuff. It's it's all up in there. It's crazy. It's it, ugh. And I've never had a problem with a film's color grade, but for some reason, the film's color grade stood out to me. I mean, it's not a huge thing, but I just like, this movie looks so ugly. Like, I don't know. It just that it just stood out. I don't know why. But um, there's a scene where, um, and this is just kind of like a, a, a nitpick, but there's a scene where um, Snake Eyes and this other guy or Storm Shadow is up in this truck that gets a whole bunch of knives thrown into it basically almost kind of like cutting them and everything else and they end up backing up and crashing and I'm thinking like they will probably get slashed <laughs> if this was real life they got swords like almost like a half an inch away from their face and away from certain body parts that if you're in a big truck and you back up and you hit something your body is going to shake, especially if a knife is that close. You're going to get cut up. And surprisingly, uh, what, like surprisingly, there's no major cuts except for like um, snake eyes. But other than that, in this accident, there's they don't get cut by the sword, even though they're this like real close to the swords. And I just like, OK, that's not realistic. <laughs> But one of the things that just really stood out to me was that the pacing is bad, just so bad. Things don't really kick up until the third act, which makes the movie feel way longer and way boring than what it was. The whole kind of middle act was just really repetitive. It was just all just about training. Nothing happens. Nothing really happens within the middle. Like literally the middle of the movie is so forgettable really forgettable um and then there's parts in this movie where you you're dealing with ninjas you're dealing with a like ninja assassins and I, i'm not about to get into specifics but the security is weak you would think that these guys who are ninjas that can sneak in the sneak in the buildings unknown in the shadows and they can kill you before you even know that they're there but yet People like, you know, certain things that happen with security and these ninjas don't know anything about it. They don't know anything about it with not only ninjas who have this keen, like, you know, instinct, but they have technology there and security is still weak enough for somebody to be able to sneak into a vault or a building or whatever. And it's like, OK, how? <laughs> And there's the character Scarlet. I'm not, like I said, I'm not too familiar with uh, G.I. Joe and the lore and the characters and everything else. Um, I'm more familiar with the movies and what the movies gave me. But the character Scarlet is introduced within the second act. It doesn't do anything into the third act. And when she's introduced, it it comes off kind of B, B movie ish. She comes off as like, they took a B-movie character and threw her into this movie. And she brought that B-movie feeling just in like how she talks, how her cadence, her mannerisms, how she comes across is like a B-movie. And literally, 
she could have been cut out of this movie. She really could have been cut out of this movie. And it probably would have been just a slight bit better. And uh, the villain wasn't that great. There's nothing really to say too much more about with that. But one thing I can say is that there was good motivation for Snake Eyes. And I love uh, basically how he is put. I love the story of how characters, main characters, are put in a situation to where they have to be um, a certain way. Like a double agent type of like way. Where they have to get some type of information to get what they want. And then, you know, you know, something to happen where they their conscience eat them, they tell them, you know, it's just stuff like that. Uh, and I, I just kind of like stories of that nature. And that's what was going on with Snake Eyes. It's like they put him in the awkward position to where he ends up befriending a person that he is supposed to be getting information or something from, but ends up forming a bond to where it kind of weighs on him like damn is this worth what i'm doing worth you know betraying his trust and so i kind of like that um but i'm gonna get a little bit more into that as well but um this movie is predictable in parts there is a setup in this movie that i even said to my son i leaned over and i'm like this is going to show up later on in the film and show sure enough I was dead on correct. Just dead on correct. There were certain things that, you know, like some certain things. It, it's predictable. Not everything, but it's, it's predictable how uh, certain things play out. But just speaking on the whole motivation behind what Snake Eyes, behind like uh, the character Snake Eyes, he comes across very villainous in this movie. Very hillish. I'm not going to, I'm not going to really get elaborate and explain why. I, I, well, I'm saying that, but when you see the movie, he comes across hillish. There are certain points in this movie where he can do something and he doesn't do it. And it's it just like, he just really is set up to where he looks, when you look at his character and what his character does throughout the film, he looks very villainous. He doesn't come across, like he comes across as a good guy, but it's just the things that he does become across villainous. And when you look at it, Storm Shadow easily could have been the hero of the movie. Uh, and I'm just, I don't know. That's just my perspective. And then one other thing, and I guess this is kind of a nitpick, but it was like Snake Eyes does have some like fight training, like martial arts and everything else. But when he joins, when he, not joins, but when he's training to join Storm Shadow's clan or whatever, and he does, he fights ninjas and all that stuff. It's like, how do you find yourself in, get, having that type of training to where you can go head to head with ninjas? Because like MMA and being a ninja, I would think are two different wave forms of fighting. And ninja, being a ninja, that just requires just probably more of a better training method than it is to be an MMA fighter. I don't know. I don't, I'm not a martial artist. I can't say. But to me, that just kind of like stood out. That was just kind of a nitpick, I guess you could call it. And I'm just like, I guess, I guess it is what it's going to be. That's whatever. <laughs> But overall, Snake Eyes was a movie that they, I don't know, they could have done way better. Maybe given a better director, a better writer to fix up certain parts of the movie to, you know, certain things that characters do and everything else. Maybe even shorten the length. It could have been better, like a better, like, fight. Like, they should have got a person who knows how to shoot a movie where fighting is involved. Because I'm expecting some John Wick. I'm expecting some like Jackie Chan, the raid type stuff. It maybe not as gory or as bloody, but something that when we look at it, it's like, oh my God, the best things is like the martial arts. And when you look at it, that's the worst thing. The action is the worst thing of this film. Really just the worst thing. I didn't hate this film. I honestly would not recommend anybody spending their money to go see this like I, I give it the same recommendation i give the old um if you can catch it in a matinee if you really want to see it in the theaters catch it at a matinee um and or just wait till it hits on streaming 
or you know just it's able to be rented for a low price like $5.99 or something like that and just rent it because this is not a great movie really not but with that said that will end this episode of the podcast. I'd like to thank you guys for joining me. And I know it's been a minute. I know it's been a minute. But I wanted to do something that's been itching at me for a while now. Because, um, you know, it's the whole thing with, like, mental health and everything. And so, you know, everybody has their issues. I have my issues. I'm not even going to front, you know. So, it's just, you know, I'm just trying to get better. I'm just trying to get better at things. And so I just got to take that step. And this is one of the steps I needed to take to get my mental health better. And uh hope you guys are doing that with your own mental health. If you have that, if you're dealing with that. But in any case, I will be dropping another episode of Reviewers Cast along with some other stuff that I had just on my mind, things I wanted to actually talk about and let you guys know my opinions on. So uh, give it a thumbs up if you like this video. And if you aren't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe because I will be putting out more videos. And again, thank you guys for checking this out. And I will see you guys on the next video. Peace out.